Hello everybody, my name is Poison Ducky, and today we're going to have another free-for-all Total War Warhammer 2 replay. Now, I don't do, this is probably my first free-for-all on my channel, and I love free-for-alls. It's just a little place to have fun, make some meme -y builds, or use, go full rush, like pick a specific thing that your army is going to good at, and just really push that aspect of your army, because other people just can't exploit a lot of things in free-for-alls and if you sign it's just show a little bit of weakness the third player maybe even the fourth player will jump in and just kill you very fun but let's get into my army introductions for the sake of time i'm not going to introduce the other armies mainly because i'll tell you just as the fighting goes on as i i'll commentate as the enemy pushes towards me but i'll show you that i have two units of warp lock Gisales. very good unit High range, uh, 300 range, by the way. It's just fantastic. Nice armor-piercing projectiles. Don't really miss very often. Two doom wheels, one of them led by the mighty Ikit Claw himself. So I'm going to have a lot of frontal wheel power, chariot power, I suppose. And two units of dragon orders. Now, the rest is just going to be chaff. Clans rats with spears, clans rats with shields. Nothing too special. And the storm vermin and the council guard. Council guard, very good, as they are unbreakable. I do like the Skaven. I like playing as rats. Rats are fun. Now, over there on the t left is going to be the green skins on the far far corner is going to be the norse skins norse skins over here with their wolfric on his mammoth giant a uh, giant interestingly enough and a manticore so and the dwarves in the far right corner so an interesting match of defensive offensive defensive offensive now let's get into the replay now a little beginning here we're just going to start off with some nice little poking my i have the ranger advantage so it's going to be fun i'm going to shoot him this green skins it's going to turn out into two separate one versus ones now the dwarves are going to fight the norse skins and i'm going to fight the green skins nothing too special a lot of free-for-alls end up like this and i really that's it's funny when you you choose free-for-all and you end up just being a 1v1 so it's like okay uh, it's just two one we runs on the battle and anything could have happened but hey if this is how we play this is how we play now i'm going to send over in front my storm vermin with swords and shields as they are the best holding unit in my roster right now against the green skin onslaught i am going to be firing at some orc boys with my uh, sharpshooters not a good choice because orc boys are low value and killing this unit is not too much i'm not gaining any value this unit's too cheap i really should be shooting at something else and you'll see that i change targets very soon to the black orcs in the bottom in the back yeah you can see my command order right there i'm going to be firing at the black orcs which is the most powerful unit that this green skin army is going to employ interestingly enough my opponent actually brings grim gore ironhide a very fun unit oh lord in general he's just very powerful very strong except he's a foot lord and he just they buffed him several times, but he's he's stronger than I think people give him credit. He's he's not trashed here. He's just bad, right? So the front line game is going to happen between my Orc Boy Biggins and my Storm Vermin, and Grimgore is going to get there, and the Wah is going to happen. Over here on the right flank, I'm going to do some cycle charging with some amazing Doom Wheel action. Two Doom Wheels in the backsides of all these Orc Boys. It's going to deal a lot of damage. He's going to use a spell. He's going to use Gorkle Fix It. He's going to reduce the speed, and I'm going to make sure to get out of there before he charges me with my Black Orcs and Orc Boy Biggins on Boars. So they have their anti-large potential. Now my snipers are doing really well. Look at this unit of Black Orcs. Black Orcs, one of the most cost-effective units in the game, is already at half their hit points. That's the power of the sharpshooter firing team. Now I see that the enemy Orc Boar Boy Biggins, say that ten times again, are going to be charged by my Rat Ogres. Now, Rat Ogres are very efficient against large targets, and in combination with some spear support from Skaven Slaves, bog them up, they're going to make quick work of that army. Now, I'm going to make sure Ikid Claw and my Wheel of Doom switch over to the left flank, and I'm going to get a nasty light Warp Lightning. What a fantastic attack little over there. That's, that's just... Warp Lightning. It's good. Now over here on my, you'll see actually my warp line, uh, my sharpshooters are actually low on ammo. That's how many shots they've fired. They only have about seven volleys left, very powerful, but taking out one unit of black orcs is unparalleled. Now I'm gonna be firing some more over here with my warp lock Gisales, and my rat ogres successfully took off the boar boys off the battlefield as they route right off. Now my front line over here, like as you can see over here, is having a little bit of trouble. 
They, it's, it's broken, and I just have my units over on the left flank will be able to hold it. So they're going to charge and get into my warp lock Gisales. That's not very good. So I'm going to send my Rat Ogres. Now, Rat Ogres versus Black Orcs is a terrible matchup, might I say. While they, Rat Ogres do have armor piercing, they'll do well. But here comes another warp lightning. Luckily for me, I do see grouping, and a warp lightning strike hits both the biggins and the black orcs, and we get a ton of value destroying one of the most powerful units. Over here, my wheels of doom and my Ickit clock, like, death squad is moving over, and we're going to run over some enemy skirmishers. Very powerful unit overall, and Grimgore himself is just going to be slicing at my storm vermin. He's actually getting quite a bit of value against my storm vermin. He has 105 kills. That's what I get for ignoring him. I... Thought of him as a smaller threat, should have thought of him as a bigger one. Should have sniped him with my Warplock Gisales, even though a good choice was the um, the Black Orcs. So my front line of all my Skaven slaves, spears, and such are crumbling. I do The only thing power I have left are some Skaven, uh, let's see, spears, some Gisales, but they're out of ammo, and mainly the power of... The Wheels of Doom along with Naked Claw. So the cycle charging is insane. They already have 54 and 52 kills, and they're just going to make sure, tear around all these Oryx boys. Like, look at this. Because I took out the Orc Boy Biggins off the battlefield right off the bat, my enemy does not have a way of actually contending against my um, Doom Wheels. So it turns out you really need to take those out. And he does have the Warlord's boys here. Are these the Warlord's boys? They're... Let's see. What? Not goblins. They're just normal though. No, they're definitely something special. But we're doing well over here. We're doing over here. My points is actually not that high. I only have a 7,600 while everyone else has higher. That's because, let's go a little slow me here. The dwarves have doing insane amount of damage to the Norskin army. They have, they're essentially trading all of their points over here. The dwarves, I believe, do have the upper hand as the only thing left that Norska has is Wolfric and some really weak and measly units that are left. And they still have some iron... iron Iron Drakes with Troll Hammer Torpedoes, and along with a Organ Gun. Man, that Organ Gun probably got so much value that game, shooting at uh, Wolfric the Wonder. So, Dwarves are going to win the flank over there. Well, we go back to what I'm dealing with. Grimgor is dealing a massive amount of damage, but I get my Gisales with what, what remaining ammo I have left. I'm going to shoot him while my Rat Ogres are going to slap him in the face. He's about at half health now, which is pretty decent. But the main straw over here is Ikip Claw. The cycle charging and the power of the Doom Wheels is just too much for these little goblins. And another Warp Lightning. Let's go. There goes the Orc Boys. Ikip Claw getting so much value already at 101 kills. And the Wheels of Doom at 103. What a fantastic combo here. I'm going to send Ikip Claw back. Make sure I can get some decent cycle charging into these Orc Boys. Look at this. What a fantastic unit. Both of these, I was so happy I chose the Doom Wheels. The Doom Wheel Squad. I was thinking of getting the, the other, uh, the Rippers, the Dwarf Thing Menace. But I was like, ah, there was only one Dwarf. And I feel like I just need to pick my fights against the Greenskins or something. And the Wheels of Doom plus Naked Claw will do massive amounts of damage. Now, the entire infantry line of almost everybody is done. The Warlords boys are doing fantastic. They're unbreakable units. And they're just getting into my back line of warp block Gisales, and I will try to defend them with some rat ogres. It's tough. All my infantry are gone except some clan rats, and I'm going to be running away. I have some clan rats with spears. Such cheap infantry. And a sec another wall goes down. And this wall is going to be very good as it increases their speed, and I need to get into some of their more skirmishers. Now, my Wheels of Doom is going to push into the back of the orc boys. I'm going to My true intention is to actually attack the orc error boys so that I can no longer shoot them. And I'm going to use Ikakaw to defend my uh, Warplock Gisales. Ikakaw himself, which is such a value train, this guy. Now, Grimgor is at like about 10, maybe 5% health, and he's still in this battle. So how, I need to take him out. As If I take him out, I believe I can take a mass routing for the green skin side. And at this point, I'm in second place in points. So I've caught up. I have a chance of winning. I am not that far behind Mr. Bang Bang Skeet Skeet. <laughs> I love that name. 
and I believe the dwarves have handily... Actually, I they're really close to taking each other out. The dwarves have very little supplies left, and Ulfric the Wanderer can cycle charge into the enemy dwarves into oblivion. Back here, I'm, I did a little bit of a misplay. I do get my... Oh, little camera if... My Wheels of Doom is a little bit out of position, and he gets smoke bomb earlier by the Nasty Skulker, so I'm going to try to get him out, get him into the Rusty Errors. I'm going to use some of my Skaven Slave Spears to just hold them back. Of course, they're going to route instantly because they're Skaven Slave Spears. And I'm going to get a little cycle charge into all these goblins and orcs, cementing it with 144? 100, 148 kills, and it starts to route, unfortunately. And that's going to be the end of that doom wheel while he may survive he is going to route straight off the battlefield his hp is a wee bit low now i'm going to start to re i'm going to get all my, the rest of my army and regroup and make sure they're no longer tired a very big mechanic in this game that a lot of people don't understand is the exhaustion mechanic and if as you can see these natty boobos are very tired you can tell a very tired very tired very tired and it could claw himself is exhausted now that reduces your combat effectiveness by quite a large margin now if you if you get the chance near the end of a match to become no longer tired become even winded like this unit of council guard being winded versus an exhausted unit is a massive advantage as being exhausted reduces your melee defense pretty handily and if you guys don't know you just stand still make your unit stand still and they will regenerate their their um, exhaustion, not exhaustion, but their combat effectiveness, I suppose. So already, Aka Claw for standing still for just a little bit is no longer exhausted and goes to very tired, and everyone will be going down and become active again. Tired, fresh, fantastic, and I really want the Council Guard as they have almost, they've lost almost no models here. Now going over the other sides of the f battlefield, it's just the green skins being mucked up, and I just, I, would, I don't want to engage them right now. I want to get my guys into a nice and fresh um, position. And the dwarves versus the uh, Norse skins, it turns out they're actually going to trade. They did so well against each other. They traded half, they literally killed everything on both of each other's armies. There's only Wolfric and only these skin wolves left. They're not even armored skin wolves. And I believe both of those armies are going to rout. With such little leadership, they're just going to send help on the sorcerer. Both armies on the side. That's why I did not showcase their battle that much, as like while they were fantastic and free-for-all, like they, they they traded. It was fantastic. Wolfric, I didn't have to deal with it, and I have the biggest army left standing. To be honest, it's really just the Council Guard. The Council Guard can probably fight all the armies left on the battlefield by themselves and still win. And let's fast forward a little bit as everybody on this side starts to rout, and the Grinskins try to get themselves into a good position, try to rally themselves under the force, but it's quite clear that I have the advantage in army. Now I'm gonna, I see my tar uh, my players, my players, my rats are finally fresh and the enemies route due to army losses. That was a very fun match, especially against the orcs. That was a lot of damage and I had a lot of fun. Let's see our unit efficiency against those orcs. Well, I know I told you guys it was a free for all. It was very fun. It just turned out into two one v ones, and I'm completely fine with that. I had 44% units remaining. That's pretty insane, and I had the highest score, 13,800. But very close was Bang Bang Skeet Skeet, the dwarf player that did very well. Now, Ikid Claw did fantastic, 124 kills, 148 on the Wheels of Doom. These were the value trains, just continuously charging. And of course, my Warp Lock Zales plus my Natty Bubo sharpshooters did so much damage. 59, 58. It may not be a high amount of dam uh, number against the Pink Panther, the Greenskins, but they focused the Black Orcs, which really mattered. He only had two units of Black Orcs, and taking them out were very important. And they focused on Grimgore Ironhide. Now, Grimgore actually got a lot of value in this game, 133 kills, and that's my fault for not focusing him earlier. I could have taken him out of the battlefield so quickly with the Natty Bubo sharp sh sharpshooters, but I just neglected it and uh, focus fired on the Black Orcs instead, which is a fair choice. Now, Rat Ogres did well. They took out the Orc Boar Biggins, which is a very important target as they're the only unit the Greenskins had that could actually bog down my Doom Wheels. Now, all my chaff did decently. Skaven Slaves, Slaves, 31 kills. That's a lot better than what most Slaves do. Clan Rats, they did their job. They held the line and 
Yeah, Storm Vermin and Swords and Shield, they held the line for a very long time against those Orc Boar Boy Biggins. Not Orc Boar Boy Biggins. Orc Biggins. Just without the boar. So I was really happy about that. And Council Guard, they... They were my reserves, I suppose. They fought for a little bit. They just take a while to kill enemy infantry models. So when I got them back into the battlefield, they just they haven't lost that many. And then they got only a few kills. But the fact that they were left at the end of the match was the reason why I probably was the... I got the most points from having a remaining army. So overall, thanks guys for watching. And if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe if you want more. I'll catch you guys later.